Namaste. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about a topic that is something which is a really important step in our skincare routines to get a healthy, glowing, radiant skin and complexion. And that is exfoliation or removal of dead skin cells. Now there's quite a few things we need to take into consideration when we are looking at an exfoliator and I will be discussing everything with you all in just a second. Welcome to Beauty and Colorful Tales. I'm Yulandi, a qualified somatologist, and on this platform of mine, I share anything skincare, beauty, and nail care tips and tricks. So if you haven't yet, feel free to like and subscribe to join us on a skincare journey for a healthy, radiant, and glowing skin. And um, let me know in the comments below of what you would like to learn next about beauty and skincare. We all thrive for a clear, glowing, radiant complexion. Let's delve into the key elements of the do's and don'ts of exfoliating or removing the dead skin cells to achieve this look. Firstly, we're going to be looking at the do's, what you need to do before you choose an exfoliator. The first thing and the most important step of this is knowing your skin type and your skin condition. Now, I've done a video a while back regarding skin types and skin conditions, so you all can go and have a look on that one to understand your skin type and skin condition a little bit more. And the reason for this is the fact that you need to know what your skin type or skin condition is, is because not all skin types or skin conditions can handle the exact same exfoliator. Some of them are a little bit more sensitive, so they need to opt for a little bit more of a gentle exfoliation option, while others are, if I can put it, tough in a way that they can handle a more aggressive sort of exfoliation but you need to know what your skin can handle before you can actually go ahead and get or use a specific exfoliation method. Secondly we need to look at the type of exfoliator that we're going to be using. Now we all think and I also used to think like that is that when you've got a rough granular exfoliator that when you exfoliate it removes all the dead skin cells and you just get rid of all your skin concerns that you've got. But in the long run, it is actually not a good thing to go and scrub your skin aggressively like that. We should rather opt for something that is gentle yet effective like your chemical exfoliants. And examples of this is like your glycolic acids, which is your AHA or alpha hydroxy acid, or your salicylic acids, which is a BHA or your beta hydroxy acids. These are very gentle on the skin yet extremely effective in removing dead skin cells, giving you that radiant glow. Thirdly, we want to start slowly, especially if you've got an extremely sensitive skin or if you haven't exfoliated before. You want to start slowly doing it only once a week or if you've got extreme sensitive skins only once every two weeks just to get your skin into the rhythm of exfoliation and see how your skin reacts. Never just jump head first going for it two, three, four times a week exfoliation because you will oversensitize your skin and you can cause damage on your skin if you are doing it incorrectly and your skin can't handle it. Fourthly, we want to focus on our problem areas. Now, this is kind of a do and a don't. Um, so the do's for this is that you want to concentrate on the areas which is more of a problematic area, which is usually a T-zone. It's called the T-zone, which is your forehead, nose, as well as on the chin area, because there's generally a lot more oil produced in this area. So the dead skin cell buildup is a lot more in this area than what it would be in other areas. Fifthly, you want to hydrate post-exfoliation or after you've exfoliated or removed dead skin cells. And the reason for this is because you've removed the dead skin cells, which kind of forms like a barrier on the surface of the skin, you want to nourish and protect the new, fresher skin cells that is lying underneath. So this also helps to enhance your effectiveness of your product. So what you would do is after you've exfoliated, which is absolutely a big must, is a apply, sorry, apply a nourishing on a hydrating face mask or a face pack that will just to help and soothe the skin. But then also when you are done with that, you want to use your hydrating or nourishing serums as well as follow with your moisturizer to ensure that your skin is nice and hydrated as well as protected from the harsh outside environment. And then lastly, what we should be doing is using an SPF or a sunscreen after you've done exfoliation. Now, this generally counts for if you've exfoliated in the morning, 
but there are also certain products containing AHAs and BHAs that you usually would apply in the morning that you would definitely need to use your sun protection afterwards. Because if you are using these ingredients in the morning and you don't apply your sunscreen, they can cause sun damage or sun sensitivity on your skin, making your problems, especially if you've got pigmentation concerns, they can make it worse. So you want to opt for exfoliating, general exfoliation you want to do in the evenings where you can exfoliate mask and serum and moisturize and all of that. But if you are using, like I said, exfoliating ingredient based products in the morning, SPF is a must. But then again, SPF is a must 365 days a year. We're not skipping that. Doesn't matter what the weather is and what you do during the day. Let's have a look at the don'ts for exfoliation. Now, the first thing is don't over exfoliate. Now, I know I've mentioned in the do's that we have to focus on your problem areas or your areas of concern, but we also don't want to over exfoliate in those areas, causing skin sensitivity, skin irritation, as well as compromising your skin's barrier. And I know that we generally want to go and scrub, especially in the areas where we sorry, areas where we have a lot of blackheads or a lot of congestion or a lot of oiliness, we generally want to exfoliate a little bit more in those areas to get rid of that. But we also shouldn't be over exfoliating in those areas because we don't want to cause any skin concerns later on. Secondly, don't skip your sun protection. Now, like I've mentioned during the do's for exfoliation, sunscreen is something that you have to apply 365 days a year. You cannot skip it. So the reason for this is because when you are exfoliating or using ingredients that is exfoliating ingredients like your AHAs and BHAs, you can cause UV damage on the skin if you do not wear your sunscreen. You want to prevent premature aging, you want to prevent skin darkening, pigmentation, and even burning of the skin. So remember, SPF every single day. Thirdly, don't disregard your skin's signals. If you are experiencing any burning, itching, redness, skin irritation, even peeling after an exfoliation, which usually happens about two to three days afterwards, if you haven't done a chemical peel in salon and you are experiencing peeling with an at-home product, reassess your exfoliation technique as well as how often you are doing it and maybe skip the exfoliation for a while, see how your skin is going and maybe just slowly reintroduce the exfoliation method again. But generally, like I said, this also once again comes down to knowing your skin type and your skin condition to prevent these things from happening. Fourthly is don't mix harsh ingredients together. There is a reason why certain ingredients are left separately. They're not formulated together. And there's a reason why others are formulated together and they're packaged in one package for you to use. Please don't go and get all three, four, five different exfoliation methods you can find in, on the shelves or wherever and mix them together and use them in one application as they can have an adverse reaction on your skin causing burning, inflammation, which in turn causes pigmentation, um, peeling of the skin. You don't want to have any of these things after exfoliation. An exfoliation method should be giving you a nice radiant glow. It shouldn't cause any skin irritation. So please don't mix anything and everything together just to see if you can get the best and quickest results possible. Fifthly, we don't want to use expired products. There is a reason why products have got expiry dates written on them. And it's usually with like a little tub that's got a lid open, which has got 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, 6 months. And that is because the ingredients are tested to be stable and effective for usage up until that time. Now, anything after that, the ingredients can become unstable and they can cause adverse reactions on the skin compromising your skin. So we want to prevent that. We don't want to have any skin reactions with expired products. So we would rather just, if it is expired, unfortunately, just chuck them and get fresh products. And lastly, we don't want to exfoliate broken or irritated skin. Broken skin in the sense of that you've got wounds on the skin, meaning cuts or abrasions on the surface of the skin because it will burn with exfoliation. 
And then with irritated skin, your skin's barrier has already been compromised. So you don't want to irritate the skin any further than what it already is. So you would definitely not exfoliate on that. And when you've got active acne, you definitely don't want to exfoliate, especially with a granular exfoliation, as you can cross-contaminate as well as spread the acne to the rest of your face. Remember that caution is key when it comes to exfoliation, because you don't want to irritate the skin more, you don't want to cause any skin damage, you want to achieve a healthy, glowing, radiant complexion. So just be careful and look at the different ways of your skin reacting as well as what your skin type and condition is before you choose your exfoliation method. Now that we know the do's and don'ts of exfoliation, how often should you exfoliate? The general rule of thumb is two to three times a week, but it all depends on your skin type, your skin concern, as well as the exfoliation method that you would be using. And when you should exfoliate, the best time to exfoliate is in the evenings because you won't expose your skin to the external pollutants and things like that that can irritate the skin and UV damage that can cause more sun damage and premature aging. And it is nice to exfoliate in the evening because one thing that you have to do after exfoliation is nourish your skin like we've mentioned. So you would apply a nice nourishing mask afterwards. Now this is like my little time that I say it is your little self-care session where you would go and exfoliate, apply the mask and then just relax, giving your skin a little bit of TLC that it needs. In conclusion, a mindful approach to exfoliation, including looking at your different skin types, skin condition, the type of exfoliation methods available, as well as following the do's and don'ts, is paramount to achieve a healthy, glowing and radiant skin complexion. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was informative regarding exfoliation, what you should be doing, what you should be avoiding, as well as how to get that radiant, glowing, healthy complexion that we all thrive for. If there's anything else that you would like to learn about skincare and beauty, just leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to join us on a healthy, radiant, glowing skincare journey.